start with our Gita mantras. That's where we thank uh, Lord Krishna. We thank uh, Rishi Vyas who wrote this beautiful scripture for us. And we thank uh, and show our reverence to this scripture also, which is a Bhagavad Gita. Om Parthaye We are studying chapter 10 in this class. And the title of this chapter is Vibhuti Yoga. This is the chapter where Arjun is asking Lord Krishna that you are telling me to think of you all the time. I'm everywhere. But can you give me some examples? So this is where Lord Krishna gives the examples that Arjun, you can look at me in any one of those. And we ended our class with the number 20 last time. Let's just look at this and then we'll start our class with 21. That's where Lord Krishna is enumerating or started to enumerate the different examples of his manifestations. So number 20, he says, Aham Atma Gudakesha Sarav Bhutashya Sthita Aham Adi Cha Madhyam Cha Bhuta Nam Anta Eva Cha He says, I am the self, the soul, Atma. O Gudakesh. And Gudakesh is a name for Arjun. Seated in the hearts of all beings. Sarav Bhutashya Sthita. I am the beginning, the middle, and also the end of all beings. So in the past, present, future, all the time, in everybody, 
This is I am there. So in other words, he is declaring very openly that he is not far from us. In fact, he is closer than the closest. That's why the Vedas say, Ya Atmani Tishthati. It's that close. Now he is uh, starting from 21. He is giving us the examples. So if a couple of people uh, can be unmuted, maybe Sujata, Manny. So you will be repeating after me and other people you repeat also. Even though you are muted, but you learn how to say these Sanskrit verses also. Aditya Nam Aham Vishnu Aditya Nam Aham Vishnu Jyoti Sham Ravi Anshumana Jyoti Sham Ravi Anshumana Marichi Marutaha Asmi Marichi Maruta Asmi Nakshatra Nam Aham Shashi Nakshatra Nam Aham Shashi Aditya Nam Among the Adityas How many Adityas there are in our Puranas? Twelve of them. Twelve. And they are the son of Sage Kashyap from his wife Aditi. Sage Kashyap had two wives, Aditi and Aditi. Aditi had the, the Devtas and they are called Adityas. So Aditya Nam, among the, all those Adityas, all those are sons of Aditi. Aham means I, Vishnu. So God came as an incarnate through Aditi and Kashyap also. Jyoti Sham, among lights, Ravi, the sun, Anshuman, radiant. Marichi Marutam Asmi. Marutam is Marichi is again the name. Marutam, the Maruts, the winds. Ask me, I. Nakshatra Nam, among the stars. Shashi, the moon. So in other words, you can look at the moon, see God in, in the moon. And meditate on that. Look at the sun, you can see God in sun also. Or you can look at Lord Vishnu. Or you can look at the Marut. So among the 12 Adityas, I am the Vishnu. Among luminaries, the radiant sun. I am Marichi among the Maruts. Among the stars, the moon, I am. And this Vishnu, reincarnation of Vishnu, from the womb of Aditi, what was his name? Vamani, ba uh, Vaman. Vaman Avatar. You remember the other day we talked about 24 Avatars? So Vaman Avatar, mm -hmm. that dwarf Avatar, looked like a very young child. Okay, so he said, you can just look at that Vishnu in the form of Vaman if you want. And Lord Krishna gave the examples from the Puranas over here because Arjun was familiar with all of this. Some of us are not familiar, even though we should be, if we are interested in learning in detail, go back to the scriptures, whether it's a Bhagavad Puran or whether any other Puran or Mahabharat, try to learn this in detail. Because in Bhagavad Puran, there are names of all these 12 Adityas. There is a Mitra, there is a Dhati, there is a Varun, Anshaha, Vivaswan, Pushaha, Savitaha. All these names, they're all together 12 Adityas. Okay? So, but in Vishnu Purana, <coughs> we read that Vishnu is one of these 12 Adityas. And he is considered, he, that of a, uh, Miracles were done through that Vaman of Thar. He says, look at that. And the sun, 
the example of a sun, we all know how radiant sun is. The source of all the energy. So that's why this phrase stands very amply, that self-explained, that the source of all energies, we can see, and we can see God in the sun also. As yoga students, we do the Surya Namaskar also. Very first thing we do when we start our yogic practice, we thank to that sun and try to see God in the sun. Okay? Maruts. Maruts are the son of Rudra, according to the Puranas. Rig Veda also mentions it. And especially in the Rig Veda, they say the Marichi is among all the Maruts. And Maruts represented the presiding deities of all the storms, winds, breeze. In short, air in motion is called Marut. And Lord Krishna is saying that Marichi, look at that, the most prominent one. And among the stars, I am the moon. At night, when we look at the sky up there, no matter how many stars are there, where does our attention go? Towards the moon. Okay. So moon is the controller, the regulator, and the splendor of all the most wonderful wonders. That's why so many songs, so many poems are written the moon. There is a well-known saying that one moon is better than a thousand stars. The light of the moon, especially when the moon is full, how beautiful it looks. So sure, there are endless twinkling of little stars, but we just look at the moon and we can think about God. So remember, the series of these uh, 22 verses, Lord Krishna is only trying to supply us and we can choose just one example. We don't have to shift. Just choose one and practice on that. Then in the next verse he says, Veda Nam Sam Veda Asmi Let me start again. Veda nam sam veda asmi. Veda nam sam veda asmi. Deva nam asmi vasva. Deva nam asmi vasva. Indriya nam manacha asmi. Indriya nam manacha asmi. Bhuta nam asmi chetna. Bhuta nam asmi chetna. Veda nam among the Vedas. We all know there are four Vedas. And among the four Vedas, Lord Krishna is saying, Sam Veda Asmi. The Sam Ved I am. What are the other names? Other Veds? Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Atharva Ved. But he says, I am Sam Ved. Deva Nam, among the gods, Asmi I am, Vasva. And Vasuva is another name for Indra. Okay. Indriya nam manacha asmi. Indriya, the senses, among the senses, mana, the mind. Cha means and asmi I am. Bhuta nam, among the living beings, I am the chetana, the consciousness. Or sometimes it's called the pure intelligence. Among the Vedas, I am the Samved. I am the Vasva among the gods. Among the senses, I am the mind. I am the consciousness among living beings. Why did he say Samved? 
If you have ever studied these Vedas, you will see that some Ved very musical, very lyrical, very complicated, melodious. Those are the Sam Ved. Very musical. So Lord Krishna says he is glorifying Sam Ved over here. And if you get a chance to study Chandokya Upanishad, you will see that how beautifully these verses are in the Chandogya Upanishad. Okay, so through the beauty of the comparison, Lord Krishna is telling us that compared to the other verses, the verses in some way are very beautiful. And I am that. In those lyrics, see me in there. And verse who I said is a King Indra, and we all know that a King Indra is called the king of the devatas. Okay, so that is the concept. Uh, there are a lot of devatas. You can see that there are degrees in the devatas over there too. But the king uh, of all those devatas is Indra. So he says, see me in that. And five senses, they function correctly only if the mind is attentive to them. If the mind wanders away, the senses cannot function properly. That's why sometimes we can, somebody is talking to us, but our mind is not connected. We don't even know what that person said. So in that sense, Lord Krishna says that I am that mind. Through the mind, the information is going. So of all the sense organs, I am the mind. And we know about the consciousness, the chetna. If the chetana is not there, that human being or any being is inert. It's that. So, so the expression of chetana when functioning through the medium of an intellect. Because intellect is higher than the mind. So chetana, the consciousness is needed in the intellect also. So that's why sometimes some authors you will see the chetana void is translated as intellect also, the higher faculty. So consciousness is the quality of the soul that distinguish it, distinguishes us from the inert matter or the insentient matter. Okay, so he says wherever you see the consciousness or the mind or that beautiful uh, Image over there, the most powerful, just think that that's where I am. Focus your mind on that. Let's look at number 23 now. More examples he is giving. Rudra naam shankraha cha asmi. Rudra naam shankraha cha asmi. Vitesh yaksh raksh saam. Nam Pavakacha Asmi Nam Pavakacha Asmi Meru Shikri Nam Ahama Meru Shikri Nam Ahem Rudra Nam Among the Rudras Rudras are the eleven forms of Lord Shiva. In the Puranas, they talk about all those 11 forms of Rudra. Har, Bahurup, Triambak, Aparjit, Shankar, Kapardi, Revat. So they are all names written in our scriptures. So among all the Rudras, he says, Shankar I am. I am Shankar. Shankar is the original form of Lord Shiva. He says, I am Shankar. Vitesh, Vitesh is a Kuber. Yaksha, Rakshasam, among the Yaksha and the Rakshas. And that's also from the Puranas. Yaksha, Rakshas. Those are the 
the personalities who are predominantly rajasik and could be satvika uh, 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 tamasik also rakshas and yaksha vasunam among the vasus pav kaha pav kis agni the fire asmi i am meru shikri naam aham the meru is a is a meru mountain mountain shikri naam of the mountains aham i am so he is giving us more examples to concentrate upon among the rudras i am shankar among the yaksha and the rakshas the lord of wealth kubera among the vasus i am a pavak agni and among the mountains i am the meru so you can look at any one of them see me in them and you can meditate so concept of rudra as the deity of destruction we are all familiar with destruction is necessary for construction the old things they got to be destroyed so destruction is a very much part of the construction so when we look at the shankar it is a god of destruction destroyer the destruction and then destruction as a yoga student sir we look at the destruction destruction of what in us the ignorance the guru is also considered a a form of shiva in fact at this ashram yoga sadhana ashram we worship prabhu ram lal ji and then his guru when he came into human form he went into the kalash mountain and his guru lord shiva so guru is a shiva also and shankar is another name for shiva so for yoga students it is the destruction of the ignorance because we are looking for the knowledge the ultimate knowledge if the ignorance is removed only that the knowledge will be there so but otherwise also for the manifested world also anything which is created will definitely end also that is part of the cycle old buildings ultimately they got to be taken down old bridges we see that if they are not taken down they become a source of hazard okay so this is part of the cycle so he says a shankar shankar and whenever we see I read about a god incarnation as a vishnu he worships shankar lord ram did lord krishna did so in a manifested form also they are giving their obeisance to shankar and then about kuber the i am the treasure of wealth among the yaksha and the rakshas in the puranas yaksha is like a semi divine demon they are very fond of acquiring acquiring of what wealth and not just acquiring holding it also they don't want to share it with anybody having wealth is nothing wrong with the wealth but if we think that we got to have it and nobody else should have it as much as we do then we are considered yaksha or rakshas so in the puranas kuber is described as a monstrous ugly creature three footed fat and short with a spreading belly a small head and eight protruding teeth is almost like a divine cashier and a very equally ugly materialistic heartless breed so you can see that uh, 
very interesting to note how the Indian rishis, ancient rishis, were typically against capitalism. Goal of life is to attain salvation, freedom. Holding, accumulating, becoming selfish was looked down upon. That's what we read in the Puranas. Sure, in Kali Yuga it has changed because our most of the people, the goal of life has changed. And that's where we see a lot of stress. We see a lot of anguish in people's mind. But when we make this ultimate goal, then no matter how much we have, according to the Prarabdha, we may have a lot or we may not have, but one thing we'll have is the peace, the bliss. Okay? So, Vasus, let's look at that example. According to the Puranas, there are eight Vasus. Those Vasus are land, water, fire, air, space, sun, moon, and stars. These eight are called Vasus. Okay, let me repeat it again. I know some of you are writing. Land, water, fire, air. Space, sun, moon, and stars. They constitute the gross structure of the universe. But Lord Krishna says, I am Agni, the fire in them. Agni gives warmth, and energy to the rest of the elements. That's how important the Agni is. That's why whenever we do any sacrament, according to the Hindu way of living, there are 16 sacraments. In all 16 sacraments, we use the Agni to worship God. So we, it's not the fire element we are worshipping, we see God in that fire. That's why it's called a divine fire. But we call it a Agni Devta. So Lord Krishna is saying, of all the Vasus, I am Pavak. And of all the peaks, I am a Meru. That's another example he's giving. This mountain believed to be the center of the universe. According to the ancient Hindu geography. And it's called a Meru mountain. Meru. And on the top of this Meru mountain lives the divine. And below this Meru mountain lie scattered the seven islands. And that constitute the world. And of them the Jambudweep is the center. And the Meru is con conceived as having the altitude of seven to eight thousand miles. And they say, the ancient scriptures, they talk about that Ganges flows in all direction from that Meru mountain. And Ganges over here, over here means the knowledge which comes from the, the hair locks of Lord Shiva. The knowledge. Number 24. Repeat after me, please. Purodha Samcha Mukhyam Mama. Purodha Samcha Mukhyam Mama. Vidhi Partha Vraspatim. Vidhi Partha Vraspatim. Sanyani Nam Aham Sakandaha. Sanyani Nam Aham Sakandaha. Sar Sam Asmi Sagraha. Sar Sam Asmi Sagara. Sam among the household priests. Mukhyam, the chief. Mom means me. Vidhi, no, K N O W. Braspati. Braspati is considered the guru of the Devdas. Braspati. 
Senani nam among the generals. Aham is I, Sukand. Sukand is a son of Shiva. Sukand. Sarasam among the lakes. Again, Asmi means I am Sagra, the ocean. So Lord Krishna is saying, among the household priests, O Partha, know me the chief, Braspati. Among the generals, I am Sakanda. Among the lakes, I am the ocean. And priests, uh, priests, they discharge the function of performing the ritualistic worships and ceremonies. Those are called the priests. So for the devatas, even though they are the gods, but they need the priest also to do the rituals. So he says, their devata, Braspati, I am. There is a planet also, which is called Braspati. In English, it's called Jupiter. And in the Rig Veda, it's mentioned the Braspati is like a uh, status among the hosts of the heavens, that Jupiter. So the topmost priest in heaven, Braspati. In the same way, the Lord indicates that I am a Sakanda, son of Shiva. There are two sons of Lord Shiva. We are all familiar with the Lord Ganesha. The other one is Sakanda. Sakanda Kartike is another Kartike. name for that. Yeah, two names for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, son of Shiva. And all these uh, um, devatas. Uh, they have their vehicles also. And it's known that peacock is the vehicle for Skanda. So he says, among all the generals I am, very strong, very fast. Of waters I am ocean. We see lots of body of water. We see the lakes also, we see the ponds also. We see the streams also. But we know that if there's no ocean, they'll all dry up. So that's why he says, I am the ocean among all the waters. Okay? This is a fact. So rivers, water pools would have long ago dried up. Okay? So among the household priests, know me the Braspati. Among generals, I am the skand, and among lakes, I am the ocean. And still elaborating the same idea, giving us more examples, he says, Maharishi Nam Brigu Aham, Maharishi Nam Brigu Aham, Giram Asmi Ekam Aksharam, Giram Asmi Ekam Aksharam, Yagya Nam Jap Yagya Asmi. Stavra nam Himalaya Stavra nam Himalaya Maharishi nam among the great rishis. See, Mahan Rishi. Mahan means great. Rishi is a saint. So, among the great saints, Brigu. That's the name of the saint, Brigu. Aham I. Giram among the Words, W O R D, word. It's me, I am a kum akshram, one syllable. Yagya nam, among the yagyas, the sacrifices. And what is a sacrifice? We talk about it, we have talked about it in the previous chapters quite a bit. Sacrifices is not a sacrificing something. It's a sacrificing our personal interest. Like a selfless action is called a sacrifice. If you remember in the previous chapters, he gave a lot of examples, 12 different kinds of yagyas. Everywhere, 
all those yogis, they make us more and more selfless. So in that sense, it's a sacrifice. Because in modern times, sacrifice, people have forgotten what sacrifice really means. Sacrifices, let go of the personal interest. Get rid of the selfishness. So he says, Yajna naam jap yajna asmi. Jap yajna is a silent repetition. Asmi I am. Sathavra naam among the immovable things, Himalaya. That Himalaya Parvat. Among the great rishis, I am Vrigu. Among the words, I am the one syllable. And what is this one syllable? Om. See, that's why sometimes people just think that there are three syllables. A, U, M, no. It's the one syllable. Rishi Patanjali said it many times. Lord Krishna is saying the same thing. It's a, oh, om is actually, it's, it's only the O. That's what he's talking about, O. Oh. But we cannot say O oh for a long time. We just have to close our lips and we say Om. And from there, people thought that it's a three syllable Om. It is just a sound. Oh, that's a name for God because it's constantly going. Internally, also, externally, also, and everywhere. In this galaxy, in the other galaxies, also. And that's where he says that I am that one syllable, that vibration, that O, oh, which is going on constantly, everywhere. But as human beings, we really cannot. We don't have that capacity. Not only that, we don't even understand it properly. Sometimes we want to just only have a competition who can say the longer armor. That's not how it is. The concept is to see God in this vibration. So among the great rishis, I am Brigu. Among the words, I am the one syllable Om. Among the sacrifices, I am the sacrifice of silent repetition. Silent repetition means you are saying the word of name, name of God silently. Nobody even knows it, but you are connected. So silent repetition. Jab Yagya, which is called, and among the immovable things, the Himalayas, Himalaya Parvat. Let's look at the Bhrigu. Why did he say the Bhrigu, Rishi, I am? Bhrigu is the chief of the seven Rishis mentioned earlier. Sapt Rishis. Bhrigu is the chief. Bhrigu is the one who recites the Manav Dharam Shastra, Manu Samriti. He is recognized as the Manu's son. If you get a chance to study Padam Purana, there are a lot of stories about Rishi Bhrigu. So that's why Lord Krishna mentioned Bhrigu Rishi over here. And the second example about Om, sacred sound, this is also called Anahat Nad. Anahat Nad. That means the sound vibration which is present, it was present in the beginning and it pervades the entire creation and it continuously keeps on going forever. Anahat, that means it never ends. And the Jap, Jap is a technique. In English, sometimes people say Jaba, but the word is a Jap. Jap is a technique by which the person who is saying the Jap, which you can call it a Japist, tries to maintain a constant stream of the same divine thought. It's just like a continuously, it's just like a 
thought does not waver. Thinking about the divine constantly. That's a job. See, that's why very popular saying is, when we walk on this path, suppose Ram is the name of God you are reciting. First to do, you say Ram, Ram, bowl. That means from your mouth you are saying Ram, Ram. Or you can say Om. You are saying it loudly. Then after that, what do you do? Ram, Ram, Rat. It's like internally you are chattering the name of God. Then after that, when the connection is built over there, connection is so strong and so continuous, then it's a Ram, Ram, Ram. Like a totally absorbed into it. So this Japa med sacrifice takes us to that level. So attention from outside is severed and you have made with the help of your mind, with the help of the name, the connection with the divine. So Lord Krishna says, Yagya Naam Jap Yagya Asme. Then it becomes a Yagya. Jap Yagya. So unbroken remembrance of God. Nitya Nirantar Anavchen Brahm Iti Sumaran. And what is the outcome of that? The Deva Atam Sakshatkar. With the help of that, what will happen? You will see what you are connected with. So disconnection from the temporary and a connection with the permanent, which is God. So in other words, just remember, Yagya is the act of dedicating ourselves to the Supreme. Dedicate. And Japya Yagya is simplest actually. For the outside rituals, we need a lot of material. For Japya Yagya, you don't need anything. It can be done anywhere, anytime. And it's extremely purifying. Because what are we trying to purify? When we are doing the Havani Yagya, sure, we are purifying outside and with the help of the mantras, we are purifying inside also. But over here, we are just purifying our thoughts. That's why in Ramayan, Tulsi Das Ji's Ramayan, Kali Yuga Keval Naam Adhara Sumir Sumir Nar Utra Ipara. So that's what Jap Yagya is, the name of God. Just keep on saying it internally. Nobody even knows. That's why I said earlier that when we first learning, sure, we'll say it loudly. We'll do the kirtan also. But after that, we are only doing it internally. and Nobody, nobody knows. Okay. I see uh, Urmilji is there. Last week, I uh, told you that uh, uh, Urmil has written a book, it's a Bhagavad Gita book, based upon our classes in poetry, chapter by chapter. A lot of other notes are there too. So uh, let me just uh, do one more verse, or maybe a couple of more verses, and then I would like to end the class with the recitation of chapter 10 by Urmilji today. Okay. So at that time, Jyoti, you can unmute Urmilji. Okay, just two more verses. Yeah. Okay, and then if we can have questions at the before. Uh, no, questions after Urmilji's uh, okay. Okay. recitation okay. of that poem, okay? Yeah. So number 26. Ashwatha Sarva Vriksha Nam. Ashwatha Sarva Vriksha Nam. Dev Rishi Nam Chanarada. Gandharava Nama Chitra Ratha Siddha Nama Kapila Muni Ashwatha Ashwatha is a people tree. People say ficus tree, some people tree, but actually Ashwatha is a, a in India there's a board. Vriksha. So 
in this country, we don't have anything like that. So not really a people exactly, but it's a bow tree. Okay, bodhi, which, which is called. Sarva Vriksha Nam, among all the trees. So he says, I am the tree which lives, lives on and on and on. There are aerial roots and they just keep on spreading. That one tree lives for thousands of years. In old times, they used to, when horses, people ride, rode horses, they'll just tie the horses over there under that tree because it's shady also. The air is beautiful over there and Ashabtha tree. So he says, among all the trees, I am Ashabtha. Dev Rishi Nam, among the divine Rishis, Narath. Okay, you all are familiar with this name, Rishi Narath. Gandharva Nam Chitra Ratha, among the Gandharvas, Chitra Rath. Siddha Nam, among the Siddhas, or the perfected ones, Kapil Muni, the sage Kapil. So among all trees, I am the Ashivta tree. Divine Rishi Narad, among all the Rishis, among Gandharavs, Amuchitra Rath, among the perfected ones, Muni Kapil. Okay, so again, he is giving us some more examples how we can see the divine in the manifested world. Okay, so the tree we talked about, Narad, we know the Rishi Narad is the guru of many great personalities. Like Vyasji himself who wrote Mahabharata and the Puranas. Valmiki who wrote that original Ramayana. Dhruv, Parlad, and many, many others. And Narad is a son of a Brahma, the creator himself. So he says, you can see me in Narada also. He does a missionary work for God with the enthusiasm and the zeal. Roaming around the entire universe. Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. Just keep on singing the name of God. With the instrument of his, which is a veena. Gandharav, who are the Gandharavs? These are the, it's a concept of subtle entities who constitute the celestial musical people. They entertain the devatas in the heaven with their art and with their music, Gandharav. So, so they are called the stars of the entertainment in heaven. So among them, Chitrarat is the most brilliant genius and he has maintained the title of the best singer there, Chitrarat. So he says, just if you want to look at Chitrarat and you adore that personality, see me in, in him also. And Muni Kapil, Muni Kapil is the founder of a Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy is the twin of yoga philosophy. So he says Kapil Muni. Okay, and the Sankhya means the logical sequence of thoughts in any intellectual argument. That's a Sankhya. So then he says in the next verse, and we'll end the class with this one. Uchaishwasam Ashwanama. Vidhi maam amrito udvam. Vidhi maam amrito udvam. Yeah, amrito udvam. Okay. Udvam means born. Amrit means the nectar. Eravatam gajendra naam. Nara naam cha naradhipam. Uchashwasam, that is a name. Ashwanam, among horses. Vidhi means no, maam means me. Amrito Udbavam, born of nectar. Eravutam, that's a name, name of, a, of an elephant. 
Gajendra Nam among lordly elephants. Nara Nam among men, Naradhipam, the king. So Lord Krishna continues naming the most magnificent in each category and reveal his glories to Arjuna. And these are some of the names which is using over here, the things which came out of the churning of the ocean. And who churned the ocean? The Devatas and the Dathyas. Okay. So the son of Diti and Aditi. Know me among horses as Uchashwam. That is the horse came, the divine horse came out of that churning of the ocean. Born of Amrit, among the lordly elephants, the Aravat, and among men, the king. So these are the stories in the Puranas again, the churning of the milky ocean, both by the gods and the demons. For the purpose of getting out of it was the nectar, the Amrit. It's a very famous story which comes again and again in all the scriptures. And all these byproducts were distributed among the Devatas and the Dhanavas. So there's a lot of symbolism in this story. And to me, the main symbolism is in life, we got to continually struggle, got to keep on working hard and reach the immortal which is Amrita by dis rediscovery of our soul. Soul is there, Atma is there, God is there, but we just don't see it because we haven't worked towards it. We've been churning only in the matter. We have not churned for the nectar. When we learn to churn for the nectar, then nectar is there. And for a yoga student, when we meditate, what is that? The churning. The pran and the ira and the pingla, they keep on churning. When they reach in the sushushna, only then they reach up there. And we talk about that in our Wednesday class, when we talk about different pranayams and different ways of meditation. This Wednesday, we are going to meditate with the help of the bans. And again, all of our classes from Sunday to Friday, they are at 10.30. Okay, so just to keep it very simple, we change the timing. Okay, so but Wednesday is for our cleansings. Sometimes we'll be showing you cleansing, sometimes uh, uh, meditation, sometimes pranayams. But this week I'm going to uh, teach you how to meditate with the help of the bands, the locks, band means the locks. So going back to this verse, so Lord Krishna is telling us, yeah, if you want, if you love that symbolism of Aravat or that Ashva, just look at that and but see me in there. I am in there. Okay. So it's a white elephant, Aravat. It's, it's like a, a the Indra sits on that. And Indra is who? We learned about it. The king of the Devatas. And then the celestial horses, you often see that uh, uh, pictorial view of that. Uh, a celestial winged horse, a horse which can fly. So horse, white horse which can fly. See God in that. So idea is to see divinity in all these examples or at least one of those examples. So Naranam Cha Naradipam, that is a, the king. It could be king of heaven. It could be king on this earth also. The king, Narana. So among all the men, the king. So all these analogies are given over here. In a very systematic pattern, he just opened it up and continually giving it to us that choose any one of these examples. Next week, we'll continue with the verse number 28 and try to finish up these further examples. Okay, so let's uh, 
uh, uh, unmuted uh, Jyoti Urmilji, and uh, just listen to that. Uh, uh, this it's exactly in, in, in the same sequence as the chapter is, but beautifully in a simple English poetry written by Urmilji. Okay. So, and we'll have the books also in our hands pretty soon. So, mm -hmm. after that, we'll have question answers. Thank, Thank you, Urmilji. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. No, it's, an, uh, it's our pleasure. Uh, Vibhuti Yog, manifestations of God's infinite powers and glories. Lord Krishna narrates to Arjuna his magnificent and infinite glories. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. O oh, mighty armed Arjuna, you are my cherished confidant and I care about your welfare. So listen again to my divine teachings and meditate on my powers and glory so rare. Neither the celestial gods nor the great seers know the real nature of my exact origin. They are born after me, so they know not that I am the source from which they begin. By my grace, those who know me as the unborn, beginningless, and Lord of the universe, they among mortals are confident about who I am and all their sinful actions disperse. From me alone arise various attributes in people, a score of them form natures of humans. Qualities like intellect, knowledge, clear thinking, forgiveness, truthfulness, and nonviolence. Other qualities are controlled senses and mind, contentment and equilibrium in all dualities. Dualities like joy, sorrow, birth, death, fear, courage, fame, infamy, charities, and austerities. From my latent energy, four noble saints, seven famed sages, and 14 Manus took birth. They were empowered by me in a way that from them originated all other mortals on this earth. The wise try hard to understand my manifold manifestations, my glories and my divine power. Then through unwavering devotion, which is Bhakti Yoga, they undeniably unite with me, their master. I am the basis of all creation, material and spiritual. Everything evolves from me, the immortal. The wise who realize my powers worship me with faith. The devotion becomes perpetual. My devotees who fix their mind on me, they are content and surrender their lives to me. They find pleasure in conversing with me, singing and chanting my glories as they see. Those who are always united with me in loving devotion and worship me wholeheartedly. I graciously give divine knowledge to those lucky souls by which they attain me surely. I who resides in the psyche as consciousness, out of compassion I confer grace on them. I dispel my devotees' darkness born of ignorance. I do so with the luminous lamp of wisdom. Arjun agreed with Lord Krishna and said, You are the Supreme Divine Personality, Brahman, the Eternal God and Supreme Purifier. You are the Supreme Abode, the Primal Being, the Unborn and the Greatest Divine Figure. The Divine Sages like Narada, Asit, Devala and Vyas have also declared this about you. You are also ratifying that thou art the cause of all creation. So now I know God is who? O Keshwa, whatever you have revealed to me about yourself, I accept that as factual and true. O Supreme Lord Bhagwan, neither gods nor demons know your real nature in my view. O Supreme Personality, O Prashottam, O Greater and the Lord of all beings. O Father of the universe and God of all gods, you alone know yourself, truly speaking. And then he asked Lord, Lord Krishna, Arjun says, kindly reveal your divine sovereignty. Please describe your divine opulence and glories. 
Only you can express the many ways you manifest and permeate the cosmos with ease. O Supreme Master of Yog Maya, in what forms can I know you and how to think of you? O the Supreme Divine Personality, which opulence should I meditate on and visualize you? Explain to me explicitly all about your divine many. Oh. What happened, Jyoti? I don't know. I think someone was trying to log on and. Oh, okay. I like. Don't to... Don't to... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Urmil. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Urmil. Okay. Now we are, uh, he's giving his uh, manifestations and his infinite divine glories. Oh, Arjuna, the best of gurus, my divine glories, to you I will describe and elucidate. My prominence and revelations are limitless. Hence, they are not easy to enumerate. I am Atma, the supreme soul, seated in the hearts of all beings, the living entities. I am Adi, the beginning, Madhyam, the middle, and I am Ant, the endless, end of bodies. I am Vishnu, the 12 sons of Aditi. Of all the luminous things, I am the radiating sun, Ravi. I am Marichi, the chief of winds, Maruts. I am Shashi, the moon and stars, million and one. I am Shashi, the moon amid stars, million and one. I am Samaveda, the most notable of the four Vedas. I am Vasava Indra in celestial gods. I am Mana, the mind among the senses. I am Chetna, the consciousness in the living body's hearts. I am Shankara, among the Rudras of Shiva. I am Kubeir, the god of wealth amid semi-divine demons. I am the Agni, the purifying fire of the eight elements, Vasus. I am Meru, among the mountains. I am Brispati of priests among the celestial gods. I am Sekanda, the chief commander. I am the vast ocean amongst the reservoirs of water, not a small lake or a pond of water. I am Brigu among the great sages. I am Ekam Aksharam, the symbol Om, the cosmic sound. I am the silent repetitive holy name in the Vedic chants. I am the Himalayas among the mountains bound. I am Asvatha, the banyan tree amongst trees. I am Narada amongst all the celestial sages. I am Chitartha among Gandharva musicians, and I am Kapil among Siddhas, the perfect yogis. I am Uch Esishravasar, the white wings celestial, I'm the white celestial winged horse, born from the churning of ocean molten. I am Aravata amongst all celestial elephants, and the king, the royal ruler of the humans. I am the Vajra, the thunderbolt war weapon. I am Kama Dhenu amongst the cows and livestock. I am Kam Dev, the god of love for procreation. Among servants, I am Vasuki, the one at the top. I am the Ananta, the serpent on whom Lord Vishnu rests. I am Varun, the sea creature's god. I am Aryama, the head of the deceased ancestors. I am Yamraj, the celestial death lord. I am Prahlad, the demon turned devotee of Vishnu. I am Kala, the time that counts and rules. I am Rigindra, the lion, king of beasts. I am Garuda, the vehicle of Vishnu, the king of fowls. I am Pavan, the wind among the purifiers. I am Parishrama, the carrier of a titanic arsenals. I am the crocodile Makara of water creatures and river Ganges of flowing water channels. I am Adi the beginning, Madhyam the middle and Ant which is the end of all creation. I am Adiveda, the supreme science of self. I am Vada, the logical closure of discussion. I am Akara, a among the 26 alphabets. I am the dual word in compounds, the correct mixes. I am the never ending time. I am the first born Brahma, the creator and sustainer of cosmos. I am the all consuming death, Mrityu. I am the origin of things and I am their future existence. I am fame, fortune, and speech. 
I am female traits, memory, wisdom, courage, and forgiveness. I am Gayatri of the poetic meters of all holy songs in Sama Veda. I am Brist Sama Him. I am harvest month in November, Margarish of seasons. I am Kusuma Akriya Spring. I am also the gambling of the fraudulent and I am the splendor of the superb and stunning. I am a victory of the victorious tenacity of the brave and virtue of good and outstanding. I am Vasudeva with Krishna among the Vrishnis. Among the ponders, I am you, Arjuna. I am the honored Vyas of all the sages. Among eminent poets, I am Shankaracharya Ushana. I am Dand, the rod of those who punish. I am Niti, the strategy of rulers pursuing feet. I am Mon, the silence of those keeping secrets. And I am Gyan, the wisdom of all well read. I am the germinating seed of all beings, O Arjuna, the great warrior never heard of or seen. There is no organism moving on moving that exists without me, the Supreme Being. With ample examples, I have proven that infinite is my glory, brilliance, authority, and power. The visible universe you see is merely a small fraction of my vast and incalculable splendor. O Arjuna, all you see is glorious, majestic, and mighty. Know it to be a spark of my epic grandeur. O oh, Arjuna, know that I am the powerhouse of opulence, of affluence. I have an oceanic reservoir. O oh, Arjuna, I wonder if these details have any value. Because these glories are only limited information. Just know that by only one fraction of my sacred power, I pervade and sustain all of creation. Thank you so much. So much. It's a lot of, uh, it, it, she learned, learned, wrote, rewrote. It's just like a beautiful poetry. Beautiful. Yes. Beautifully done. This was, it, uh, beautiful. was it understandable by all of you? Yes. Yes, yes. yes of course. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. Really nice. So, especially when we study and then we hear Na again. Namaste. 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 Namaste, Manju. Namaste. So, uh, let's do the Shanti, Sorry, Shanti Mantra, then we can have a little conversation. Anybody has any question, please do ask and we can chat also. But let's do the Shanti part so that people who want to leave, they can leave. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Namaskar, Who does it? Kim. Kim, okay, Kim. Yeah, it's Jonathan. Jonathan has it. Okay, Jonathan, how are you? How are you? Oh, I'm muted. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. I was, it was a question from last week, but it's carried over to this week as well, which is, uh, so Arjun tells Krish, Krishna that uh, many of the other sages like Narad have, have told him that Krishna is the supreme creator, mm -hmm. but he, he's, uh, he's unconvinced, I think, or, or he, he wants to hear something more. And so he yes. asks Krishna about it, but it, <laughs> I guess as as a new person to this uh, book and this philosophy, mm -hmm. it, it seems like Krishna isn't giving anything that's uh, like something that's uh, that Narad couldn't uh, provide. Also, he, yes. he's giving more more examples, but it, it's not like why why wouldn't Krishna just like grab him and and. Show shake him up <laughs> shake him up <laughs> you yeah. know eventually eventually krishna will do that in the next chapter okay <laughs> right now he is giving him a, 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 the theoretical knowledge yeah. and then in the next chapter arjun will say he will ask for it that you say i am everywhere but i don't see you yeah so lord krishna will say that with these eyes these material eyes you won't be able to see me i am everywhere let me give you the divine eyes. Uh, then Lord Krishna will give him divine eyes and then Arjun sees God everywhere. 
he will see God. There's no beginning and end of the middle of God. Mm -hmm. And he gets uh, extremely fearful. Okay. Because when you see something so big, and Arjun, Arjun will see that, we will uh, uh, recite all those verses. Arjun says, please take this form of yours away. I really <laughs> cannot take it. I do understand. Arjun starts singing the glories of God. Yeah. And then uh, he says, I like your original uh, <laughs> softer uh, personality. Please, I don't want this. <laughs> so there's a time for everything, right? Yeah. So, so, but the, the, good. I like your uh, uh, this question uh, that you are thinking ahead of time, also that, uh, and you are saying, "How come he doesn't shake him up?" But he does yeah. shake him up. Okay. <laughs> he is so shaken. You will see that he is so shaken. <laughs> he cannot take it. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think, a, like a follow-up question I have to that is, why doesn't God shake all of us up? Because, you know, I think he does. I think he does. Eh? But do we recognize that we are shaken up or not? Right now, isn't this a shake-up? Yeah. This is a shake-up <laughs> for the entire humanity. Yeah. Right? And some people will get shaken up and get on the right path. Others won't. Mm -hmm. Right? Because ultimately, God gives us the freedom. Whether we want mm -hmm. to straighten up right now or whether we want to wait a few more births. There's a freedom God has given it to us. Okay? So, but uh, it's nice to see both of you, young students, uh, thinking deeply, studying together. Proud of you. Keep it up, both of you. Thank you. Okay. And, and Kim, Kim, anytime, I know you love Indian food. <laughs> <laughs> I cook enough food, come on over. I'll put a, a box for you outside. Just let me know. Let me know when you when you get a craving for Indian food. We'll I'll be there that. now. <laughs> we, we'll be there now. Okay, all right. <laughs> so I'll have a container for you, okay? Yeah, dal, sabji, whatever you want. Would love to cook it, cook for you. Okay? I yeah, love, love you guys. I, Harishri, I'm enjoying these two students looking yes. at them. Yes, so don't you see that uh, they are like a, a divine couple. <laughs> the <laughs> same way I see Bridget, yeah. and, Bridget and Rick also. Yes, my goodness. Oh, you guys yeah, I know amazing. these uh, uh, young people, they inspire us. Right, Manju? Yeah. So, true. so true. Give, give it up. And Urmil, your poetry was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yes. Because especially after a, 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 Reciting these verses, and then you uh, hear in uh, uh, such a and beautiful uh, 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 rhyme in English. It just uh, gives me the chills, actually. And, Love it. Love it. And yes, yes, and, uh, Harshi. Manji. Yes, Manji. Uh, I loved it after reading the poetry asked. Do you understand it? Lord Krishna When he's teaching, he's asking Arjun, do you understand it? <laughs> Remember when Purmi said that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Do you understand it? <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you all are good. Really. Yeah, love all of you. Just okay. uh, stay safe. Okay, uh, and then Kim, I mean it. Whenever you want to come, just uh, give me a little notice. I'll have food ready for you. Okay? Yes. Okay, we have a... Brothers and sisters, I'll be leaving now. Bye-bye. Yeah, we have Bye -bye. a Diwali every day. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I know. <laughs> so I'll see you guys at 10.30. Uh, 10.30 30 tomorrow morning. Namaste. 10.30 tomorrow morning. Manju, are you cooking? You got the air Yeah. <laughs> yes, main guy is going to come. We're going to sit outside. So I'm cooking. Okay. All right. Good, good. Yeah.